Imagine you woke up tomorrow in a universe identical to ours, your friends and home unchanged, except one little detail about Minecraft in particular is slightly off. Perhaps emeralds are now rubies, perchance creepers emit sounds and ender pearls stack up to 17, or, or maybe, perhaps nothing is the same. In order to be prepared for that extremely likely scenario, I've built a PTT, or Parallel Timeline Teleporter. I don't know where it will lead, but I'm down to clown and explore some Minecraft in alternate time. <laughs> So let's start small. Minecraft is ancient, and a lot of things it was supposed to have never made it into any game release. Some others were simply experiments that despite existing briefly, they now evoke nostalgia pexes that can you all please go away? Well, in this parallel timeline, it seems Yeb refused to tell Notch, creator of Minecraft, anything about being able to tweak details around, so the first development ideas found their way into the game. Swell additions such as this song Notch scrapped together to test music disc and removing it was a little bit of a hassle, so now you can listen to COM4. Audio jungle. Another notable difference is that Notch didn't listen to Dinnerbone when he said he had a tough time distinguishing rubies because he was colorblind, so they are now in the game. Yes, this timeline includes everything that was left out of the game for one reason or another. Case in point, cherry trees, which were delightfully added for us recently, but this timeline is still in 1.16 and got them. Those are indeed giant zombies. You can actually summon these in your game right now, but this timeline implemented them, despite their janky and broken hitboxes. They also added furniture in this timeline, like chairs and tables. It's very small, but these do bring the environment together a little better, though the models are slightly lackluster. Talking about lackluster models, what the heck are these? Well, these are the Pikmin before they were zombie Pikmin. They trade you all kinds of stuff for emeralds, including new colors of wool we don't got. Oh, I see, you're talking about those 3D models in the background that don't fit at all in the game. Ugh. Why would you want to talk about them? They're so completely uninteresting. Fine. These are the test models Notch used once the game was in testing phase. He intended to use the Quake creating model format, MD3, for entities, but he ultimately ended up using another, JSON. Still, these guys got in the game temporarily with animations and all, leading to obscenely cursed test footage. Well, this timeline kept the Quake format, and we got these mobs that barely do anything. It seems they didn't fit in the game's art style, so they were simply left relegated as Easter eggs. Rana here doesn't even have animations or shading. Eh, nothing a little second degree murder can solve. H hold up. So this dude's called Black Steve. His existence is about being Steve but black? Isn't that a wee bit screwed up? Regardless, you should know the first moth mod in this timeline was the Gummy Bear. Yeah, I know it hits much more harder when you actually look at it and not just hear what it is. Anyways, the one real mob they added was a Scarecrow, which makes for a nifty decoration and scares mobs from stepping in your crops. This timeline also has cocks along with redstone, but they're even less intuitive than redstone. Except they can be placed vertically and I still don't know how to use them. So you possibly noticed the giants and cherry trees were sort of floating in the air. That's due to the most evident cut feature being the sky dimension, what we know as the end. And if this video releases appropriately, I hope they announce an update for this bad boy tomorrow. You can see current Minecraft labeled this dimension as sky internally. That's because it originally started as this, a war generation setting created to add a counterpart to the nether. A heaven to contrast hell, and though you can enable these settings back to some trigger in beta 1.8, I've gotta admit the end as a concept is far more creative than this barren and barely functional wasteland. Wait, this timeline is unstable and probably shouldn't exist anyway, so let me show you the more stable timeline. In this timeline, you can do this. That's right, you can pee on the floor, but that's not what I wanted to show you. I actually wanted to show you this. Our myth is the reality. A sky dimension in full glory. Now, yes, the mod we've got for the Aether is very close to what this timeline offers, except that one has bosses where this one simply has an arena to fight the Ender Dragon in before accessing the proper dimension. Evidently, I am traveling through the timelines and not just using mods for the sake of the thought experiment. <laughs> but this dimension really is the nether with a dinner bowl name tag. Instead of traversing it with bridges and through fire, you can traverse this dimension simply with the help of rabbit bodies that let you hover over the clouds, even without a litra. It's a different method of flying that requires some player strategy, but it's exciting to pull off. Besides, falling off returns you to the overworld, so there isn't much danger. The dimension is akin to the nether before its update, offering a single biome and a lootable structure. 
the real advantage here is the new minerals they added. Some of them just get you these nice yellow torches to decorate with. But the highlight here is the gravitite ore, which falls upwards like sand does downwards. This one allows you to fly in the overworld as well, though you need to route out the path beforehand with cloud blocks that spring you upwards. This dimension also includes its own kind of mending, thanks to the altar, which will fix up your items for a quantity of the yellow material. I admit, I find this timeline quite fitting. It's as annoying to fight the mobs here as it is to fight the mobs in the end, between their attacks and status effects. The same mechanics we eventually obtained, albeit with different design. There is an equivalent to gas in the form of sapphires, which only not just likely, really. I looked around and the people here are asking for a sky update due to the like of variety. Apparently they didn't get shulkers in this timeline. Oh, okay, yeah, no, 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 we're going back further in time. Let's get some real alternative universe stuff before I even have to think about maybe possibly not getting shulkers. How about if Mojang never sold to Microsoft? I wonder what would have happened. This one stable candidate where Microsoft lowballed Mojang before they released 1.0, which results in some interesting differences. For example, the game was made more ambitious and Jeff decided to add seasons to the game. A highly requested feature that was implemented well enough to change the game fundamentally. Meanwhile, Notch up and designed a more appealing kind of dungeon called the Labyrinth. He added a variant of zombies which are stronger and replace rotten flesh with cloth, now necessary to make a bed which greatly influences the way the first night goes. This made the game much more difficult, but in turn more rewarding, and although they are about to release the final game in this timeline, I have to admit it feels considerably more indie. Their adventure update was more unique, adding new wood types and biomes that made the game a lot more immersive, with things such as fireflies flying about. But yes, the season's mechanic was probably the primary change that stands out in this Minecraft timeline. It's a basic mechanic in paper, but brings so much variety to the game in practice. The day-night cycle gains new depth when the season changes the length of nights, colors of the trees, and even how easy it is to grow food, they even beefed up inventory management slightly before our version did. That mentioned though, the whole mechanic is still its dry pre-hunger counterpart. Food can stack leading to a convoluted inventory. This is back when Minecraft didn't even have 300 items, so it's pretty frustrating. But I can imagine the hunger mechanic would be revamped by 1.0, and this game iteration probably feels very unique in 2023, which they'll eventually catch up to us in 12 years, I suppose. Like, you can't sprint, that's boring. A new workstation was implemented, which allows you to obtain crystals by trammeling dirt and sand, though the crystals themselves don't do much as of now, just get you a few decorative blocks. That's a highlight. Colored wood adds a splash of personality to builds. Science and painting decorations were improved with new UIs to customize them, there's even flags which you can freely paint on a la Animal Crossing, giving the game much charm. I particularly dig how this timeline decided to improve the nether earlier by adding a different cool variant in it. Which looks cool though- AH GASTED! Talking about things our timeline took too long to add but this one added incredibly earlier, there's also other blobs of stone types here. They are basic but good and you can even get other kinds of polished stone depending on the furnace you end up using. But you know what, let's keep going back, let's get crazy, let's say Minecraft did the caves and cliffs update uh, what, 11 years ago? Imagine that the caves got a larger update than the overworld, with deeper caves and more involved generations, stone types, new zombies, and an alternate to the nether that takes the game in an entirely different direction. This timeline has a really entertaining Minecraft of the alpha stage. They added stamina rather than hunger, which limits how long you can run, but it becomes an extremely fun resource to manage without breaking the field. You can also spot the new maple biome, which brings some beautiful variety to the colors of trees in the world. In the caves, you might encounter new resources belonging to a tier beyond diamond. However, they don't yield stronger armor or weapons, but rather enable the usage of magic and enchantments, which are the worst part of this timeline. Not because the enchanting mechanic itself is bad or annoying, but because you need to hunt for shooting stars which don't really rain down often and it just revolves waiting and waiting and waiting at night. At the same time, this timeline has 13 years of progress to be done and apparently Terraria stole a lot of its mechanics but yes, we now have rubies and sapphires, only mineable with diamond tier tools which allow the player to get healing magic once and even agility magic to become a little spider-man. This version brings back the fear I felt from Minecraft before its newer updates, the dread from exploring the mines and knowing a bad strategy can kill you wiping your progress. In turn, it also enhances the feeling of conquering a survival situation with a proper reward that makes you powerful. This here is the Divergent Nether, found below a layer of obsidian so diamonds are required to enter this tier of the mines, where powerful versions of enemies lay among their source of power, crystals you can use to apply enchantments to tools. These are efficiency, protection and sharpness so far, who knows what they will add in the future. To get these, you need to hunt down enemies down below to get their essence which you can make into cores you can apply to tools using the new work table. 
I have fun with this version, but I don't see myself playing it for as long as I could play a 1.20 game. Maybe this timeline's 1.20 went in a completely different direction, and I hope they found a way to make the sedentary aspect of Minecraft more compelling since I didn't really feel like I had to make a house in this version. Oh boy, let's first away even further back. Let's observe some timelines where Minecraft isn't even called Minecraft, or, or maybe timelines where Minecraft failed. Ooh, rub it down, what a cool possibility. Let's go! Okay, so this is in Minecraft. It's a game notch made instead. It's uh, it's bad. The gameplay is bland. It's supposed to be based off Dwarf Fortress, but it's pretty tame. Yeah, I think I should head back. The machine's on fire! Sorry, I lost my composter there. Uh, the machine's on fire. Uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Of course the machine made in Minecraft is going to explode if I go to a timeline without it. The input display isn't even working. Crud, 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 crud. Okay, I just gotta floor it. Onwards to any timeline with Minecraft! This is not what I meant. So you know how people complain about Minecraft survival not having too much surviving or something? Apparently it's too easy to survive as if people play Minecraft for its gripping difficulty and not for all of the different venues by which to stretch its mechanics thin. So this timeline had these criticisms with a majority of reviews stating it makes no sense for trees to float or creepers aren't real animals. Subsequently, after version 1.3, all production efforts were halted to focus on developing a more realistic edition of the game. So here it is, the timeline where Minecraft is an accurate survival experience. Let's just chop some trees real quick and get out of here. Ah, I see. Realistically, you don't punch trees. No, in this mod, you've gotta start by collecting twigs and rocks off the ground, which you can nap into basic tools you can perfectly survive off, but you cannot thrive off. Crafting and furnaces all work differently, as you need realistic tools to make proper structures such as saws for chopping wood and hammers for forging weapons. Heck, burning has been completely revamped and now requires several methods of heating up food and metals in order to survive and create the basic pickaxe. So begin by making a stone axe. Chop up some wood and you'll soon realize that the tree chops down in one go, as that is more realistic. Make a stone shovel and a hoe, then use that hoe to gather grass from around the area so you can get some straws you'll need later. Find specific weights with clay below and dig up the clay, but be careful because blocks now react to gravity and will not stack over each other as you're accustomed to. Shift the clay into a base and different mold shape like the tools you want to make as well as a jug of water so you don't die of thirst. Now you'll make a small hole where you'll dump all of the raw pottery in before filling it with grass straws you gathered earlier as well as the logs to make a pit kiln. Yes, I know it's very hard to pronounce all of these words and I can barely do it. Then you you must gather mineral rocks from around the area until you find enough of them to either make 100 milliliters of one or combine them into primitive alloys, which you'll hopefully find before your pit kiln is done cooking for 8 hours. And then you can take the clay stuff out, wait for them to cool down, stuff the base with the minerals you found unless you didn't find them on which is keep looking. And after that you make another kiln with the base that has the minerals in it for 8 hours as you once again wait for them to melt and you better keep an eye on it this time because the second the clean is done your melted minerals will start solidifying and you need to quickly dump the liquid into the molds before you can get them out. And finally, get a pickaxe which you'll hopefully not use incorrectly and die being crushed by a rock slide like I did. Okay, I appreciate the detail of this timeline's mechanics, but wow is it tedious. Of my 9 hours of gameplay to gather this footage, two of them had me trying to figure out what to do, one of them had me wandering around for a pit clean I lost track of because of all the goddamn grass, and four of them were spent waiting for cleans to cook or for minerals to show up among the abundant grass and gross amount of regular ass rocks. Meanwhile, my diet became ruined in having too much protein and vegetable because you're supposed to also have a balanced diet in this mod as well. So I didn't really make it too far, but it's definitely a very complex game. And you better add like another hour from that because getting that last clip out in understandable quality was really, really tough. Uh, honestly, I just want to live out of here and I would have done it earlier if the machine wasn't a complete mess. What did these buttons even do? <laughs> Parallel universes. Where are you taking? <laughs> this timeline is. It's the timeline where Mojang cares a little more. It's. The perfect Minecraft timeline? I cannot believe this world exists. Everything you've ever asked for is here, except better PvP. You all lose even in the perfect timeline. This timeline has so many mechanics Minecraft should have included, from war generation to customization and even to regular quality of life features like reach around block placing. There's not lack of whimsical or heartwarming features that are less impactful on the gameplay even, such as this silly potato body. 
How long have we been requesting ambient music discs or glass item frames to display the item without overlays? It's puzzling to have wood variations of doors, signs, and fences, but not chests and bookshelves. Why doesn't the game have more diverse textures for the same block set that would immediately enhance or build quality? It's just baffling to me that every pig looks the same in 2023. This timeline has so many features that polish exploration much more aggressively than structures, such as blossom trees that have different leaf color variations depending on the biome they spawn in, which can be any or colorful crystals inside cave biome that allow players to color their tools. I ended up getting a new glowing shroom biome next to an ancient city and after pooping my pants a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, I found these saplings that have a custom type of wood you cannot get from other places, meaning harvesting these ancient trees comes down to your end of the task. Holes suddenly have more impact because their tier now affects how fast you can harvest and how effective it is to gather your crops. Feeding stations can be added to pens for mobs to reproduce without you looking at the cost of more food, and tons of new redstone components to ones to make your life have been put in, such as end rods breaking blocks when pushed by a piston, which you can use to make a stone farm. I particularly like the gravity sand, a new sand that falls the other way when powered by redstone, which creates a much more compact switch. I built my house out of tatami mats, even made a room with 4.5 tatami, which I decorated using vertical slabs. And yes, I decided to craft a gold pickaxe because it now comes with a big fortune effect, meaning at least one gold tool finally has purpose. Minecraft added mobs that lost the mob bone, they simply added them later. Go crabs! And now you get the glare, the moo bloom, and even the wildfire along with a whole new nether structure. Speaking of crabs, this time on already introduced them, along with Shiba Inus, which retrieve arrows and aid you in finding dark spots while being adorable. Look, they even flop onto beds! Pet pet. There's tortoises you can periodically shear to get the mineral they have in their back, and these also valley ghosts that help you find nether structures if you kill them. C418 was finally properly licensed by Mojang and his music is in the game again. Honestly, playing this was a placid experience. And it excites me to see Mojang in our timeline is slowly adding some features this timeline had for a while, like their ugly ass stalactites, or so great, not logs making the sounds of mob heads, tools, and armor customization. I wonder if I even have to return. I wanna live in a place with this Minecraft, caring for its players and making the game more amazing each update. No more sniffers with two flowers only or structures that add a single disc or block. These people will get a whole set of ancient flowers, and their archaeology might include a real mechanic instead of a clicking and holding interaction. I could return, but why would I? Like, I'm thinking of a genuine reason why I would, in this hypothetical timeline rupturing scenario, return to a worse timeline. This one might remain stuck in 1.19 for years, and it would still add more content than several Mojang updates we'll see in the next 3 years. I've thought maybe Mojang could get a break because people make so many suggestions about Minecraft exactly because it's a game designed for us to be able to make practically anything. We expect that anything can be done in Minecraft, including the addition of countless highly requested features. But ultimately, I'd be lying if I denied that Minecraft's development lately has been lackluster. I, I guess my brother takeaway is that, for me, the perfect timeline isn't the one that changed the game fundamentally by keeping it indie, adding biomes, magic, whatever to it, but one where the game we have is simply done better. Sure, some of the timelines here made me feel nostalgic a few days after playing them, but none of them are superior to the current game in its current state. So whether it's this timeline or the perfect one, I don't think it matters. The potential of Minecraft is so broad, all of these timelines would have resulted in a successful behemoth of a game, and most of them in a massive product. Which basically is to say I'm coping really hard because reality will collapse if I don't get back before the credits of this video roll. You know how my outro has those funny drums before the song hits? I really would hate to hear those right about now. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought the time was going to be a little bit more time. WAIT!